When we pass an electrical current through a wire, it generates a magnetic field around the wire. If we reverse the direction of current, the magnetic field also reverses. We can see that by placing some compasses around the wire. When we connect an AC generator to a closed loop of wire, the magnetic field inside the generator is going to basically push and pull the electrons in the wire so that they constantly alternate direction between moving forwards and backwards. So the magnetic field is therefore constantly reversing. The voltage is going to vary between its maximum and minimum values because of this. That's why we see a sine wave pattern if we connect an oscilloscope to a power outlet. This pattern repeats 50 or 60 times per second depending on whether it's a 50 or 60 hertz supply. The AEC frequency in North America is 60 hertz, but most of the world is just 50 hertz. With a transformer, the frequency we put in is the frequency we get out. We can just increase or decrease the voltage, not the frequency. When we wrap the wire into a coil, this magnetic field becomes even stronger. The wire has to be insulated with an enamel coating to ensure the current flows along the entire length. Otherwise, it will just take the shortest route and it will not work. If we place a second coil of wire in close proximity to the first coil, then the magnetic field will induce a voltage into this second coil because this magnetic field is going to push and pull the electrons in the second coil, forcing them to move. This is therefore a transformer. The same thing happens if we move a magnet past a coil of wire. The magnet will induce a voltage into the coil. The key component here is that the magnetic field is constantly changing polarity as well as intensity. This disturbs the free electrons and causes them to move, and we call this electromotive force. However, this only works with alternating current. It will not work if we connect a direct current supply to the transformer. The flow of electrons will still create a magnetic field around the primary coil, but this will be constant and a fixed polarity and intensity. So it will not disturb the electrons in the secondary side. The only time it will create an electromotive force using direct current is briefly when the switch is opened and closed because this energizes and de-energizes the magnetic field of the coil. So it is therefore changing. Or alternatively, we could change the voltage because that will also increase and then decrease the magnetic field of the coil. Notice that when I pass a DC current through this transformer, we get a very brief voltage spike as the magnetic field increases and also as it decreases. But if I use an AC supply, we get a constant output voltage because the magnetic field is constantly changing. And that is why we use alternating current. Now, we can just use two separate coils of wire as a transformer. It will work, but not very well. The problem is that we're wasting a lot of the magnetic field because it's not in range of the secondary coil. So we place a ferromagnetic iron core between the coils. This concentrates the magnetic field and guides it to the secondary coil so that the transformer is more efficient. However, this is not a perfect solution. It will result in eddy currents flowing around the core, which will heat up the transformer and therefore wastes energy. To reduce this, the core is made of lots of thin laminated sheets, which restricts the eddy current movements and reduces their effects, although we will still lose some of the magnetic field due to leakage flux, and we also get some losses due to the disturbances caused at the joints. We also lose energy in the wire and the coils, because they will always have some resistance, and this generates heat. So in a transformer, we have copper losses as well as iron losses. The alternating current causes the sheets to expand and contract tiny, tiny amounts, which causes vibrations between the sheets, and this is why we get that humming sound. Check out one of these videos to continue learning about electrical engineering, and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.